These are two Simplink Sub 1 GHz launchpads and I'm trying to learn how to program their radio. In a previous video I managed to load an empty RTOS on one of these launchpads and now I'm going to configure its radio and try to send signals. Uh, to test if that's working I'm going to use the other launchpad here together with a tool from TI that can directly talk to the radio so we don't have to program the receiver we can just connect that to the tool and check if we are getting data from this side. The actions that I'm going to do today is take that empty RTOS example, use a configuration tool to set up all the parameters for this radio and then change that RTOS program to enable those parameters and start sending data every one second or every half second. And when that's ready I'll also connect the receiver part, configure that radio tool again and start capturing whatever is coming from A to B. So let's get to our starting point and create ourselves a new empty RTOS project. I have explained this in another video so I'm not going through this in depth. Let's first rename the project. We remove the empty and we call it sender. We can then rename a few files that are named empty by default and we don't like that. So the C file here and the configuration for Artos. When I'm at this point I always like to compile my program and execute it just to see if I haven't done something wrong at the very beginning. So once we execute it we should see a LED blinking. The compilation has gone ok, so that is fine. I'm now going to start the debugger. I have my webcam pointing to the launchpad so we can see live what's happening. So we've just seen that the program is loaded. I'm now going to execute my TI RTOS empty shell and we should have a blinky example. That's all what's going to happen. There we go, so the green light goes on and the red light uh, blinks with a second interval. That's fine. We have a good project to start. We can now stop the program and remove some of the code that we don't need from this empty example. We won't use argument 0 here to indicate the frequency of the TI RTOS task. Our radio is going to take care that we sleep at the necessary times. I'm also going to remove everything that's related to the LEDs because we are not using them. So we really have an empty main task. I will also rename heartbeat function here to sender function so that it reflects what's actually happening. I now have an empty RTOS task that's ready for us to implement. We are going to transmit data in this one and we have a main function that prepares our RTOS generates the task here and starts the RTOS scheduler. I will now create a folder in the project to contain the sources for our radio settings and then I'll switch to SmartRF Studio to configure the radio. The folder is created. Uh, this will include a C file and a header file so we have to include this folder into the include settings of our project. Let's do a last compilation to see if we haven't goofed up anything. And that went fine, so we now have again a stable point just before we switch to SmartRF Studio. My sender launchpad is still connected, so when I open SmartRF Studio it will recognize it and I can open its control panel. And we are going to configure our radio as sender only and we're going to send packets, so this tab is the right tab to use. I'm in Europe, so I'm going to use this frequency of 868. Uh, the only thing that I'm going to change is lower the transmission power just to save some energy and also to show that we have different settings than the default. So I will now save the Smart RF Studio parameters in our project so that later on, when we want to revisit these settings, we can start from where we ended here. File Save Configuration. I changed that to my workspace for the transmission in our project in our directory that we have just created and I'll call this smart rf sender config.
If you want, you can now test out your radio. I'm not going to do it because I know it works. What I'm going to do is ask SmartRF to create an API for us and an initialization function to set all the parameters that we've just configured. There is a code export function for that. And SmartRF has created a C file and a header file with those settings and with the API for the radio. Now, it always creates a sender and receiver API, but because we're only going to use our radio as sender, we can switch off the receiver parts. So if I click off packet RX here, you'll see that the only API functions that are going to be implemented are the sender ones. Then we can save both the C and the header file to that folder that we've just created in our project. So I'll first do the header file, navigate to my project, and save it. Then the same with the C file. All activities done here. We can now return to Code Composer Studio and work further with our project. You will see that there are three files now in our folder. The configuration file for the SmartRF Studio and the header and the C file that we've just generated. They will contain all the parameters that we have just uh, configured and the API to initialize and transmit data. And before we start messing with that code, it's again a good time to see if our project still compiles or if we have something wrong. And it compiles. Let's first take care that we include our SmartRF API. This is the header file that we have just created. I've also included the standard lib here because we're going to use the random function to generate bogus data. We'll then declare a few constants and variables. I haven't invented all of this myself. I'm just taking the code from the default TI Artos package sender example. The main highlights here are that our payload will be 30 characters long and that we will try to send uh, a packet every half uh, second. Then we have our typical Artos artifacts. And here is the location for our payload. The data that we will send will reside here. We also have a variable here that will always contain the time from the radio chip. We will use that to make the radio go sleep while it's not emitting. It's worth having a look at the API for this radio to understand why we're using this time variable and how that works uh, together with the power management of the radio. We'll give each packet that we send a unique number starting with zero and then counting up. So that's going to be captured in this variable. And these two are still artifacts from the empty program that I'm going to remove. So let's now create the init function. The init function takes all the work to initialize our task variables and then set up the task. I'm going to remove the arc zero here because it's not used by our program. And now that we have that function, let's add it to the main call. Instead of doing all the initialization here, we will do the initialization in our init function. Almost there. Last thing to do is implement our sender function. Again, I'm stealing the code from the TI Artos packet send example. And it really is worth checking out how the time works because we are asking the radio for the time and we're also telling it exactly at which times it should send data. And that combination, asking the time and saying you have to send information the next half millisecond takes care that the radio goes to sleep in between. Everything should be ready by now. Let's just remove the last parameter that we have from the old code that we don't use and try to compile the program. Yes, everything good. Compilation without errors, without warnings. We can now start testing. Our sender is now ready. Once we start the debugger, it will start to transmit packets, but we can't see if it's working, right? So we have to have a receiver to check what's happening. Luckily, I have this second identical launch pod, which I named the receiver. I'm going to use that as the test bed to check what data is coming from the sender. I don't have to program it, I can directly connect it to SmartRF Studio and we can set it up with the same parameters as what we have done for the sender and see if any data is being received from this one. I'll plug in the receiver launchpad and it should register itself in SmartRF Studio. I can then open its console, put it as the receiver here and 
check if all the settings are okay. I don't have to change any settings here. The critical ones are the same as the transmitter. So I can just start receiving. And we don't see anything here. And that's normal because I haven't started my sender yet. But all of this should drastically change once I load my firmware to the receiver and start executing the code. So everything is ready now. The sender firmware is loaded and waiting to be executed. Our testbed is running here waiting for packages. So I'm now going to start it and bear with me. We should see packages receiving on the other side. And success. So we have started from an MTTI RTOS program, removed some garbage that we don't need from that, added radio settings via Smart RF Studio, then added an initialization task and a sender task, and every half a second our radio is transmitting data. You will see that the strength of the radio is lower than when you normally test it, and that's because I had set the transmission power on 10 in my program here. And that all worked well. If you're stuck somewhere, always go back to that example from TI Artos, the packet TX example, and see if you have done anything different than there.